Thank you, Hildy, for the introduction, and uh, thank you to the Schwarzenegger Institute for having me here today and, uh, to participate in this wonderful discussion. So we're gonna switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, human health impacts of uh, climate change. And um, I, uh, all of our studies at OE have really focused more on heat impacts. And so I know that there's other um, impacts that other agencies focus on, but ours is really heat. So um, there's sometimes skepticism. Why would we even study um, heat impacts in California? Well, because there's very uh, few studies focusing on California. Um, we have a number of monitors, and by that I mean not just temperature and climate monitors, but we also have a lot of air pollution monitors. Um, and uh, in California, we have um, less of a problem of the uh, air conditioners being a marker of socioeconomic status just because in coastal areas of California, uh, where there is um, mostly the higher income population, there are many times not um, air conditioners available, especially in Northern California. Um, and if we're gonna see an impact of climate anywhere, um, I mean, if we're gonna see it in California, we'll probably see it anywhere just because we have very high levels of pollution, as you all know, and a relatively mild climate. And by that, I mean, um, the population centroid. So whenever we look at um, our studies of uh, temperature, we really are focusing mostly on the highly populated areas. I do realize you know, we have diverse um, climate, but we're focusing more on the urban areas. And um, it's very important to point out that the studies of heat waves greatly underestimate the effects, um, just because there's not a, a systematic definition for heat waves. Um, and also, you often don't even see quote unquote, heat related deaths unless a heat wave occurs. And so when we're doing um, studies of uh, temperature, we don't really just look at heat related mortality. For example, we would look at cardiovascular um, outcomes as well. And so some of the questions that we've uh, looked at so far is just to look at the simple uh, association of temperature and mortality. Um, and then we wanna see since we know that there's been a lot of these air pollution effects on um, the same outcomes that we're looking at, we want to make sure that the temperature impacts are independent of the effects of air pollutants, meaning that there is a separate effect of temperature and there's also a separate effect of these air pollutants. We want to look and see if there's uh, vulnerable uh, subgroups um, because then we know that a lot of these heat-related deaths, for example, um, are largely preventable. And so if we can identify susceptible subgroups or areas, we can really help prevent uh, uh, health effects. Um, and then we have uh, an example of the 2006 heat wave in California, and that is really um, just a real life example to see how much it really changes. Um, so all the studies that I'm gonna present here are really looking at the warm season in California, and that's what we're defining as heat. Then I have an example of a heat wave to show how much it really changes when we have a heat wave. Um, we also look at other outcomes such as hospital visits or emergency room visits. And then um, this is my personal favorite just because this is a first uh, study that has looked at this. I uh, looked at preterm delivery, so we're also delving into um, adverse birth outcomes related to heat exposure. Um, this is just an example of one of the studies that we looked at, and um, the, the, you can just see that we have uh, inland and coastal counties included. Um, in our more recent studies, we actually have, there's uh, more monitors and more, um, more counties included in our um, analyses, and we also look at climate zones. Um, so it, it's gotten a little bit more, um, uh, I don't know, it, just, just refining our exposure assessment. Um, but I just wanted to give you an example. So we look at the effects of daily apparent temperature, and apparent temperature is just uh, temperature and humidity. Um, and in California, sometimes humidity actually increases temperature, and then there's been uh, cases where it actually decreases the temperature. And because we want to look at heat impacts, we limit all our, uh, California has really two seasons, so we're looking at the, the warmer season of May through September. And um, some of the uh, outcomes that I'm gonna present here um, is uh, deaths, hospital admissions. Um, also, there's a little bit of emergency room visits that I've thrown in here, premature births. And um, the air pollutants that we look at um, just uh, as confounders or to adjust for the effect of temperature are particulate matter, ozone, carbon monoxide, and nitrogen dioxide. So this is the more exciting part, I promise, the results. <laughs> 
um, it's just as a, a, if you can look at the effect of apparent temperature on your left, you could see that there's about a 2.3% increase per 10 degree Fahrenheit um, increase in a, apparent temperature. So there's a 2.3% increase in mortality from a 10 degree. So I know that's a little bit hard to try to figure that out. So if you're going from 60 to 70 degrees, for example, or 70 to 80 degrees, you would see an increased mortality risk of 2.3%. And this is just from temperature uh, or apparent temperature, not heat waves. This is including heat wave and non-heat waves. And then just look at all these uh, pollutants on the side. You can see that even after I have accounted for them, there's still uh, an independent effect of temperature and actually pretty close to the effect of temperature alone. So even though they may impact a little bit um, or not at all, um, with the effect of temperature, you could see that there's still an effect of temperature alone. And then uh, just to look at some of the health effects, you could see that when we look at all causes, it's about 2.3%. And that's largely driven by cardiovascular outcomes, which is 2.6%. And when we looked at cardiovascular outcomes in more detail, um, you know, the subgroups uh, of uh, cardiovascular disease, we found things such as heart attacks were even uh, had a, had a greater risk. So this is actually, since we're looking at all, all cardiovascular diseases together, um, it's actually kind of diluting the effect. Um, then we didn't see much of a respiratory effect actually here at all, because um, if uh, when it crosses zero, when the line crosses zero, it just means that there's no statistically significant effect. So, um, and this, uh, what I've shown you here is for mortality, but I just want to point out that we saw a similar thing uh, for emergency room visits and hospital visits as well, but I'm not presenting those results just because of uh, time constraints. Um, and by race, these are the categories that were reported in the death certificates. Um, and you could see that there are some, uh, you know, disparities by race. Um, the, um, for mortality, um, there was a uh, twice, almost twice, the, I mean, all of the races have increased risk, but compared to whites, blacks had uh, almost two times increased risk. And actually, when we looked at emergency room visits, we saw the same effect, but for the Hispanic population instead. So depending on the outcome, we had disparities by race, but it would uh, be different. Um, and then another thing that um, was of interest for us was looking at age group. And many of the previous studies have always focused on the elderly because you know that they're not able to thermoregulate as well. And so we found that here as well. And um, you can see it's very close to our overall 2.3%. Um, and uh, But here we also looked at children and saw that that was actually even, um, children less than five had even a greater effect. And then um, when I looked at children uh, less, or infants less than one, that was even a stronger effect. So that's actually a study that we're looking at in, in more detail now. So it's interesting um, because we're not only finding the elderly, we're finding other subgroups as well. And like I said, we need to uh, identify the vulnerable subgroups. And uh, just to give a quick example, um, I think uh, someone here had talked about linearity. And so um, the effect of temperature is not linear in that when we have a heat wave, it's, there's an exponential increase. Um, and it's actually four times greater um, than what had been uh, what, what I reported for the heat wave and non-heat wave uh, periods. Um, and I know that you know for many of us who lived in uh, California in 2006, we remember that heat wave. And the, based on the coroner's reports, um, there was about 147 deaths. But when we actually redid that analysis and looked at cardiovascular outcomes and all causes. Um, actually, I think this one was just all causes. Um, we found that the impact um, was actually one and a half to three times greater. So not just looking at heat-related deaths is very important. So, um, and this is, uh, I think, the last study that I'm going to present. It's just looking at um, preterm delivery, um, where we looked at births um, that were 20 to 36 gestational weeks, and of course, 37 to about 44 is full term. So this is looking at the period right before that. Um, and we just looked at um, all, this is actually a large, pretty large population. We had about 60,000 births because we looked at all births within 10 kilometers of a monitor. And the monitors are pretty much located where most people live. Um, and so um, I, I think the rest of this information is just 
It's just extra. <laughs> so I'll, I'll just get um, to the, some of the results. Um, the age uh, categories that we looked at, um, these are maternal age categories, under 20, under 25, 25 to 34, and 35 and older. Again, it's important to realize that all of the uh, mothers had increased risk um, for preterm delivery um, associated with uh, increased apparent temperature, but you could see that the younger mothers had the greatest risk. And then um, also looking at race uh, ethnic groups, um, again, all of the mothers had uh, increased uh, risk for preterm delivery with the greatest risk for uh, blacks followed by Asians, and that's a category that we kind of um, created on our own um, just because California has a large enough Asian uh, population, and then uh, Hispanic as well. So um, you do see some variation by race for preterm delivery as well, um, and this is also temperature associated during the warm season. Um, and I'm not going to have time to get into this study, but um, most recently we did a uh, study on emergency room visits uh, where we were able to look at over 1.2 uh, uh, million uh, emergency room visits, and that's just over a period of four years. Um, and we saw significant positive associations for ischemic heart disease, ischemic stroke, cardiac dysrhythmia, hypotension, diabetes, I mean, look at this list, intestinal infections, dehydration, acute renal failure, and of course, heat um, illness. But you can see that not all of these are just the, the typical heat-related um, uh, outcomes. So even after adjusting for air pollutants, we, we, um, these risks remained because we actually did have more <laughs> outcomes, but after we adjusted for um, air pollution for those, those effects went away. And the risks often varied by age, uh, um, like I showed you before, a racial ethnic group. And it just, depending on the outcome, it was kind of all over the board. But we did see also some uh, disparities there. And uh, that's all I have time for. <laughs> Thank you.